Had you been regularly investing in Titan shares through an SIP for the past five years, you would be sitting pretty with an annualized return of almost 23%. Wow. If you did the same with SBI, you would have made around 31% returns. That's much more than the 17.5% returns you would have gotten from a Nifty 50 index fund or any best performing mutual fund. Stock SIPs are such a smart investment strategy over mutual fund SIPs. Now looking at the amazing returns, if you are regretting your decision to do SIP in mutual funds and not in stocks at the first place, well, hold your horses. There's much more to the story which you should know. Hello and welcome to our channel 5 Minute Finance by ET Money where we talk about the basics of personal finance and investments. In this video, we'll discuss about SIP in stocks. We'll check whether it is an effective investment strategy or not. Towards the end, we'll also discuss the best method to do SIP in stocks. So let's get started. Compared to SIP in mutual funds, stock SIPs are a whole different ball game compared. Like in mutual funds, you have the option of investing a fixed sum every month for a preset defined period. Suppose you have 1000 rupees SIP in SBI Nifty index funds and its NAV is rupees 209. In this transaction, you will get 4.78 units of that fund. But in case of stocks, you cannot hold it in part or in fractions. You must hold a full unit of the stock because SEBI does not allow fractional ownership of shares. Now listen to this carefully. So in case of SIP in stocks, instead of deciding how much money to invest every month, you need to decide the number of shares you want to buy. Do SIP in stocks make sense? To find the answer, we have compared the SIP returns of three large cap stocks included in the Nifty 50 index, Hindustan Unilever, TCS and Reliance. These companies have a solid market presence and are well established players. Using an online stock SIP calculator, we calculated the returns if you had invested in these stocks every month for the last five years. The details are on your screen. Now, as you can see in the table, if you had started an SIP in the stock of Hindustan Unilever, the return is meager. While in TCS and Reliance, the annualized returns are 10.89% and 13.59% respectively. These returns, I would say, are neither bad but not stellar either. Despite their heavyweight status, the stocks have failed to even beat the Nifty 50 index returns when it comes to SIP in them. Now, if you had made a lump sum investment five years back in these stocks, HUL would have fetched you a 5.44% annualized return. TCS 13.97% and Reliance would have given you 21.91%. In the same time period, Nifty 50 has generated 15.32% annualized returns. So clearly, all these three stocks underperformed the Nifty 50 index by a good margin when it comes to SIP in stocks. This calculation doesn't include the dividend income or returns from spun out company Geo Financials from Reliance Industry. If you include the dividend income, the returns would have been much higher. So from a mathematical standpoint, the effectiveness of stocks SIP doesn't appear to match the efficiency that SIP demonstrates with mutual funds. So considering all these factors, is stock SIP possible? Well, we have tried to answer this question in the next segment of this video where we'll tell you three major and crucial things you should know before starting SIP in stocks. Number one, spotting winners early. In the stock market, the companies that are shining today aren't guaranteed to shine tomorrow. Take HUL, Asian Paints and Page Industries. These stocks were like money-making machines for investors for years, but not anymore. So if you want to succeed in stock investing or stock SIP, it is important that you identify the upcoming winners before everyone else does. But this is quite challenging. You have to look at the stocks beyond large established companies with untested business models. It's like picking the next Bajaj Pinsir when no investor was convinced about the business model. If you get it right, you are in for a big win. But if it turns out to be wrong, well, you might find yourself back where you started or worse, watching your investment value shrink. Number two, getting stuck with bad stock. Businesses operate in a dynamic environment where uncertainty and risks are ever present. Over time, the factors based on which you have invested in the stock can entirely change, which may impact the stock performance. Tracking all the factors is not only time consuming, but also virtually impossible. 
So committing to invest in a stock for a long time period, like a decade or more, carries inherent risk. You cannot apply the buy and forget rule here. If the company is not doing great, you need to rethink whether it is still worth continuing the investment or is it time to cut your losses. Take Yes Bank for example. Just five years ago, it was a blue chip stock and everyone's favorite. But one after another new scandals about financial mismanagement by promoters shook investor confidence and stock price nosedived. So imagine if you had SIP in Yes Bank and got stuck with it, hoping for a turnaround, you would probably be staring at big losses right now. Number three, concentration risk. SIP strategy works best only in case of diversified investment vehicles like mutual funds and ETFs, where the risk spreads out and the chances of generating higher returns increases. On the other hand, accumulating stock through SIP can backfire as it leads to a concentrated portfolio. It defeats one of the most important fundamental investing principles, that is diversification. The less diverse the portfolio is, the higher the risk of underperformance. If the market crashes, similar to those experienced at the start of the pandemic or during 2008 financial crisis, recovering from the loss is not only challenging but can also affect your mental peace. So if you are looking at investing via SIP, mutual funds may be an ideal option for you. Or else, instead of SIPing in one single stock, you would need to create a diversified portfolio of stocks and then do SIP in it. This brings us to the end of this video. Now, when it comes to stocks, investing opinions vary widely among different people and experts. It's essential to remember that doing your own research is crucial. Consider all the factors, weigh the pros and cons and make an informed decision. Hope to see you soon with more insightful videos. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.